الحمد لله والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى Praise Allah and we ask him to grant peace upon those servants whom he has chosen Allahumma salli wa sallam ala sayidina Muhammadin nurik as-sari wa maridik al-jari wa jma'ni bihi fi kulli atwari wa iyyahum wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ya nur wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin alhamdulillah we praise Allah and we thank him for his grace in allowing us to gather in this blessed night and this is the night before the day that we call Jumu'ah, the eve of Jumu'ah. And it has distinctions. And it is a, a night that the Prophet ﷺ referred to as being radiant. It is a, pro it is a night the Prophet ﷺ, may peace be upon him, taught us that we're shown to him when we send salawat upon him. It's a night that the Prophet ﷺ taught to us in which Allah answers prayers. So he said ﷺ, أَكْثِرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ فِي اللَّيْلَةِ الزَّهْرَى وَالْيَوْمِ الْأَزْهَرِ فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ تُعْرَضُ عَلَيْهِ He said, invoke many prayers, send much salutations upon me in the radiant night, referring to Thursday night, the eve before Jumu'ah, and the bright day, referring to Friday, the day of Jumu'ah. And then he said, for surely your prayers are shown to me. He taught us that Friday night, or Thursday night rather, the eve before Friday, is a night when prayer is not rejected. And if we look at the distinction that Allah gave this evening, there's a distinction that connects to the birth of the Prophet And that is that the end of the night, particularly in Mecca, right, the last third of the night, particularly in the Mecca time, that is a blessed time. What is a blessed distinction in that time? That is a time in which Prophet Muhammad emerged into this world. Right, with a light so powerful that women who attended his birth said the room filled with light and it was though the stars were going to fall upon us. That his mother said that a light emerged and from it I could see the palaces of the Romans in the city of Busra. He taught us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that at that time, at the last third of the night, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends and that's a meaning uh, becoming of Allah's magnificence, right? Not a spatial dissension. Allah does not reveal His creatures, but a manifestation of divine nearness and divine responsiveness to our prayers that He terms nuzul. That Allah descends in that time and Allah offers Himself, offers His grace to us in that time. Who is praying that I may answer their prayer, who's supplicating that I may answer, who has a need that I may fulfill it, who is seeking forgiveness that I may grant them forgiveness, who is repenting that I might accept their repentance. Allah gives this call each night in the last third, however on this night that the Prophet ﷺ said is radiant, this night that the Prophet ﷺ said we're shown, our prayers are shown to him. Right when Sidi Nader was saying when he mentions one of the lines of those po of this poem, say Sallallahu Alaihi. When each of you said Sallallahu Alaihi, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has shown that. Allah. Right in this night when he said we're show he's shown our prayers, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Maghrib the divine manifestation of grace. Who is asking that I may answer their request? Who has a need that I may fulfill it? Who is seeking forgiveness that I may forgive them? Who is repenting that I may accept their repentance that Allah makes? He makes that through the whole night. This is the night that Allah blessed us to gather. And Allah blessed us to gather in a gathering where He's remembered, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's remembered with the names and the attributes and the verses of Allah's book. 
and the formulas of supplication that were revealed on the tongue of the best of creation. And his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is prayed upon. And if we gather like this, we should understand this is a garden of paradise. If we gather like this and we remember Allah, right? And we told Ibn Ali, we said, you know, we have to get this gathering going. We have to develop a momentum in this gathering. We said, develop the momentum with the angels because we can't count on humans, <laughs> right? If there's dhikr, angels surround this gathering by the true promise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions those who mention him in a gathering and a gathering better than them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, he's shown us sending salawat upon him. When we say Ya Nabi Salam Alaik, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responds to our salams. We ask Allah by all of this. We ask Allah that he open for us a door to entering in on the lamp of virtue, and he's the lamp of virtue, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa anta misbahu kulli fadlin, as Imam al Basiri says. Wa anta misbahu kulli fadlin. Fama tasturu illa an dawik al adwa'u. You are the lamp of every virtue, so no lights proceed except from your light. We ask Allah by the grace that He's given us and that He bless this and accept this, fulfill our needs, answer our prayers, forgive our sins, turn our evil deeds into good deeds, and open for each of us a door of repentance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a door in this gathering that He shines upon us from the virtue of that lamp of virtue, and that He connects us to that one upon whom was revealed the Qur'an. And in this virtues, and again, what's the, what's the objective of this? The objective of this are little inklings of the light of Al Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam shining on each of us. The light of this beloved Prophet, we ask Allah that it shine. In khair and lutf and afiyah. And as Amir said, shine, recognize, shine. May Allah give us that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from his light shines upon us and from the revelation that was revealed upon him. We're studying the beginning of his reception of the revelation. And we discussed and perhaps all of us have read the hadith in Al-Bukhari that when Allah began to reveal to Prophet Muhammad, He revealed upon him, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. You recite, you who was known for being ummi, for not being a literate man who, who recited and wrote, but by my command, by my grace, by the grace of me, your Lord, Iqra bismi rabbik. The one who created, this will not occur except by him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, not by your strength or your power, O Muhammad. So Allah revealed those verses to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that shook him, and that rocked his being sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. In the narration of Bukhari, he said, khashitu ala nafsi, I feared for myself. And we discussed revelation. What is revelation? Revelation is the speech of Allah coming to the heart of a prophet. The speech of Allah is one of Allah's beginningless eternal attributes. A beginningless eternal attribute of Allah's essence coming onto the heart of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would that not rock his being? How would not that place him in a state of awe. Our shayukh mentioned what should be understood of that khashya that he was in, of that awe that he was in, was it was the awe that he experienced from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah manifesting his essence upon the essence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, to a degree that he hadn't previously experienced to a degree that though Allah had prepared him for this experience, by what's mentioned in the beginning of the hadith, that he began to have revelation in the form of a true dream. So he saw Jibril in the dream. He saw the first verses in a dream, but he experienced it now in a level of, of manifestation that he had not previously experienced, and that rocked him. And he returned with it to Sayyidina Khadija, right? Asking her, Zemmiluni, Zemmilumi. Zemmiluni until his fear had subsided. 
So she took him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she went through various ways. That Sadiqa among the Nisa, right? That voracious saint among the women of this community, she went through various ways to affirm for herself. Some of the scholars of Sira mentioned because for him it was clear, right? But for, to affirm for herself that this was in fact revelation that he had received, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So she visited monks that were in her, her region, right? And she had been previously told by the Jews that he was coming. She had heard the stories of Maysara, or excuse me, the story from Maysara of the, of the Christian monks that said this was the last prophet. She married him anticipating that he was the last prophet, but she visited a local monk. She visited her cousin Waraka. And Waraka, he said that this is a Namus al-Akbar. This is the archangel, what you've experienced. This is the archangel that brought revelation to Musa alayhi salam. And Waraka, he affirmed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, if only I would be a young man when your people will drive you out. And he said, would they drive me out? They'll drive you out. No one's brought the likes of his saves that he'll be driven out. And then Waraka passed away. Right? Waraka bin Nofel died, and as Bukhari narrates, then there was a, success, a gap or a pause in the revelation. Imagine the state of the Prophet ﷺ after spending years in seclusion, secluding himself, having these experiences, seeing light. He would see a light and hear from a, a voice, Ya Muhammad. Or here, you are Allah's messenger and I am Jibreel. He would walk and he would hear, Assalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. And he would look and there'd be nothing there but a stone. Right? He's having these experiences. Right? Longing for that manifestation of his Lord and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifest the first verses of the Quran to him. Imagine the satisfaction, the ecstasy that he experienced with that first revelation, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and then we have a pause in it, then we have fetratul wahi, the gap in the revelation. Some of the learned stretch the gap out to three years, but they say it was like two years and a half. What you'll read in some tafsir of the gap being days, that was a brief gap that occurred prior to the revelation of Surah Wad Duha. Right? But imagine this lengthy gap where he's not receiving revelation. And that didn't mean he wasn't necessarily seeing Jibril. Alayhi salam. But he's not receiving the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That experience of Allah manifesting his speech on the heart of a Nabi. Nazala bihi ruhul amin ala qalbika li takuna min al mundarin. That the, 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 the trustworthy messenger, Jibril, the trustworthy spirit, brought this Qur'an to your heart that you would be from the warners. Imagine that stopping. And the learned mention the types of sabr, right? The types of patience or discipline. And they say the most severe, is that, the most severe of them is a sabr anil mahabba, right? Being patient with being separated from the one that you love. And they say that that is the most severe, right? And any of us that love one of the Arifin Billah, mo much of our spiritual poetry, that's what it's about. Is that you've met one of those individuals, one of those dawat, one of those pure essences that you love solely for Allah's sake. That you saw in them the embodiment of the inheritance of this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which in a physical earthly sense is the closest will come. And then that ceases. That ceases, the pain of that, the difficulty of that, the severity of that, that's more difficult than being patient and staying away from sin, or more difficult than being patient and, and, and persisting in obedience, or more difficult than being patient and, and enduring, mis, un, enduring trials the greatest type of, type of patience is a sabr al-mahabba. So that's where the Prophet is. 
enduring the difficulty of no longer receiving that revelation after first being introduced to it. Right? So it's no wonder we find narrations of the scholars of Sirah that he would climb to a mountain as if to throw himself from it. And Jibril would appear to him, you are the messenger of Allah and I am Jibril. They mention from the wisdoms of this is that that first revelation so shook him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this gap in the revelation that he would long for its return and it would prepare him for the continuous reception of the revelation that he would later receive. During this gap, they narrate that Israfil would actually bring him a word or some portion of the revelation. And they mentioned for the first three years that Israfil would actually bring revelation to the Prophet Muhammad Who is Israfil? Israfil is the angel that blows the horn for the day of, res of resurrection. Israfil is the angel that is entrusted with maintaining the guarded tablet. Right? The tablet in which Allah's decrees are written. The Quran and the guarded tablet is so weighty that one letter of it all the angels cannot lift. But Allah enables Israfil to lift those letters by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and strength and not by that of Israfil. That's Israfil. And the Prophet sallallahu during this time, he's meeting Israfil. The Prophet sallallahu in this early period, he meets not only Jibril and Israfil, he meets Mikael, Michael. Who is that? The angel that brings rain and, su and, and sustenance. Right? So when his, his chest is split, prior to receiving revelation at Hira, Jibril comes in Mikail, Jibril, Mikail remains in the heavens, and Jibril alayhi salam performs a procedure. Right? So during this time, he's still meeting the angels. During this time, he's still receiving some revelation, if, if that rewire is sound and that understanding, but at the hands of Israfil and not at the hands of, of Jibrail. During this time, he's still secluding himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the cave of Hira. Right? And we should reflect on the cave of Hira. Right? Our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he departed, he fled to his Lord and departed the falsehood that was taking place around him. That was prior to receiving revelation. If we hope that our hearts are pure, purified, and we hope to have increase in yaqeen, in certitude, in strong faith, in experiential faith, we have to seclude ourselves from the nonsense that takes place in the world. So he continued to seclude himself. What's wondrous about this seclusion is while he secluded himself, what was some of his worship? He would feed the poor. Right? So he would still perform service for the poor, for those who are needy, but he secluded himself from the nonsense that was going on around him. And he mentions, and Al-Bukhari narrates, that he finished one of his times of seclusion in Al-Hira, right? And this is other than, than the seclusion that took place before Iqra. How long would he seclude himself there? He might seclude himself there for a month, living in a cave, observing the haram, feeding the poor on the simple provision that he brought there. Perhaps meeting Sayyidina Khadija who would assist him and, and give him more provision in return. So he remains there for a month and he's descending. And he hears a voice, Ya Muhammad. Right? And he looks to the front and he looks to the back and he looks to the right and he looks to the left. He doesn't see anything. And he looks above him and in one narration that he saw something Azim. Right? He saw something tremendous, something magnificent. In another narration, he sees Jibril. He sees the angel that came to him in Hira, this time sitting on a throne in the sky. Right? And, and again, that's the yaqeen of prophets. Right? Prof for for non-prophets, right? Or that's the yaqeen of the prophets and the siddiqeen. Their certainty, we aspire to have certainty. And ta'budullaha ka'anna katara, that you worship Allah as though you see him. That the unseen is as, that the unseen is as though it's seen. The certitude of the prophets is the unseen is seen. Right? So he sees Jibril sitting on a throne in the sky in a narration. He collapsed from the vision of what he saw. 
Right? He collapsed from the power of what was manifested to him and he returns again to Sayyidina Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha. This time he says, Dathiruni, Dathiruni. Cover me, cover me. Right? In a narration, pour cold water on me. Right? He's so struck by what's descending upon his heart. And again, this is the person of the most about, right? The person with the most stability, the most firmness in his state. The revelations that were uh, being manifested to him were so much so that he would say, cover me, cover me. He would say, pour cold water upon me. So when he's in this state, and again, this is after the gap that he's experienced in the revelation from Jibril. Maybe placing that gap out to like two and a half years, what does Allah reveal to his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Oh, you who is enfolded, you who is covered, you who is cloaked. And in that is a gentleness in the divine address. Right? If you speak to someone in the state that they're in, as he spoke to Sayyidina Ali once, right? Sayyidina Ali, he and Sayyidina Fatima got into it, and he's sleeping in the masjid in the earth, right? To be gentle to him. Ya Aba Turab. Oh, you who's in the dirt, get up. It's time to go. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Oh, you who is enfolded. Also, we find this early Qur'an, who is it speaking to? It's speaking directly to the Prophet ﷺ. This is Allah revealing to his Habib ﷺ. What al Habib ﷺ needed to receive, the preparation he needed to undergo, the, the commands he personally needed to, um, to implement ﷺ. So what does the Lord say? Qum fa'andir. Stand and warn. That with, for the Prophet ﷺ is the beginning of, of a new um, stage in his message. We have Nubuwa, right? Nubuwa, prophecy, being a prophet. That is receiving the revelation without being commanded to transmit it to others. And he did transmit to those who were immediately around him in his household. And then we have Risala, right? Being a messenger. What is being a messenger? A messenger is the one who receives revelation and is ordered to transmit that. Qum fa'andir, this begins, or this is, the, is the, the turning the page on the chapter of Nubuwa and opening the page on the chapter of Risala. Right? Now he's the one who's proclaiming this message to all of the worlds. Qum fa'andir. And then again, and if you look at all of these first revelations, Ikra bismi rabbik. Recite in the name of your Lord. Ma anta bi That's Surah Ikra. Surah Noon. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbik. You by the blessing of your Lord are not insane. Wadkur isma rabbik. al muzammil Mention the name of your Lord. Wa rabbika fakabbir. And declare the greatness of your Lord. Right? Wa rabbika fakabbir. And your Lord declare His greatness. The Prophet ﷺ, they narrate that immediately upon receiving this, and Sayyidina Khadija is there, he says, Allahu Akbar, immediately responds to the command, and Sayyidina Khadija says, Allahu Akbar, out of joy that recognizing that he's receiving revelation. Do not perceive Kibriya, O oh my beloved, do not perceive greatness as with anyone other than your Lord. Greatness is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute that's unbecoming for any of the creation. Right? So the Prophet sallallahu receiving this, nothing's great in his eyes and heart. Right? And your, um, and your garments then purify. From that, change from the customs of, your, of the time of ignorance where they drag their garments out of arrogance, but wear the garments of a humble man. Sallallahu alayhi wa Purify your heart. Purify yourself when you stand before Allah in salah. And as it proceeded in previous mention, salah was taught to the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa during this early time. He's already performing salah. Thiyabaka, thiyabaka fatahir and purify your garments, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructing His beloved how to come into His presence subhanahu wa ta'ala.
وَالرُّجِزَ فَحْجُرْ Right? And shun vileness, specifically of, of the idols of your time. Right? You're surrounded by those worshiping idols. Surrounded by those who are impure with the customs of, of ignorance. And that's manifest in their closing. Surrounded by those who see everything as great other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Magnify your Lord. Purify your garment and avoid their filth. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect us to this beloved. And by the Quran that was revealed upon him and the belovedness of that Habib from the one who revealed it to him, we ask you, O oh Allah, to grant us to understand the book. And we ask you, O oh Allah, to forgive our sins. All of us who are present, Ya Allah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa taught us in Sahih Hadith, numerous Sahih Hadith, that you forgive the sins of those who come to gatherings of dhikr. Ya Allah, our sins have wore down our backs, Ya Allah. Our sins have worn us down and weighed down our backs. We ask you, O Allah, to forgive us, all of us, all of our sins in khair and lutf and afiyah. We ask you that the call that your Prophet ﷺ taught us, and kumu maghfur and lakum, qad buddi lat sayyatukum hasanat. May you all stand forgiven. Your evil deeds have been turned into good deeds. We ask you, O oh Allah, to grant us that in khair and lutf and afiyah. And qumu maghfur and lakum, qad buddi lat sayyatukum hasanat. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. Please excuse me.